Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the schizophrenic disorders and it's it's a bit misleading. It says disorders, plural. Um, basically, what we've got here is the, the disorder schizophrenia with lots of subtypes underneath it Okay, that will be discussed today. Uh, you can see that the statistics are uh, larger than you might think. One in 100 people according to the World Health Organization, which puts it about 1% of the population. And uh, what we'll talk about a little later is the causes and the treatments for schizophrenia can can often um, help a person achieve a somewhat normal life, okay, to where they walk amongst us without us knowing, uh, again, if properly medicated. Schizophrenia means split mind. All right, I want to make sure you guys don't get this confused with split personality. Okay, split personality is uh, one person acting like different people at different times of the day, different stages in their life, etc. A schizophrenic is one person, okay, uh, but the mind gets split and torn into pieces and filled with uh, these possible characteristics. One is what's called delusional thoughts or disorganized thinking, all right? Um, example would be, uh, a false belief like you are some sort of God, some sort of spirit, all right, who is called to do something uh, greater, okay? Or it could be just simply a false belief that you're some fictional character. So that's what's called disorganized thought. Then there's disturbed perceptions. This is the one that gets, I think, uh, talked about the most and, and uh, displayed the most in, say, films or documentaries. These are Hallucinations, okay? A majority of hallucina hallucinogenic experiences of a schizophrenic are, come in the are going to come in the form of auditory hallucinations, okay? These are false perceptions that are either visual or auditory. I'll share a video with you guys of uh, a simulated auditory experience, all right? CNN's Anderson Cooper got to demonstrate this on TV, and it's pretty um, uh, intense, okay? So I will warn you that I like it. it. It gives Anderson Cooper some respect for it, and hopefully it will, it will give you some respect for what individuals with uh, disturbed auditory hallucinations go through. All right. And then the third possible characteristic is the display of inappropriate emotions. Okay. Now, these can come in the form of what's called positive symptoms or negative symptoms. For example, a positive symptom means the presence of inappropriate behaviors. A negative symptom is the absence of appropriate behaviors. So if a uh, schizophrenic goes what's called catatonic, you can see down here, catatonia is a, is a negative symptom. It's when a person goes completely still and will not move for hours, possibly even days. That's the absence of an appropriate behavior. Okay. Um, laughing at a funeral, however, acting out loud and obnoxiously, say, at, in an in inappropriate way would be an example of a positive symptom. So someone with schizophrenia can have all of these, or they can have variations of, of the following three characteristics. Okay, moving on to sort of the background of schizophrenia. It's onset, okay, isn't necessarily childhood. It says here it's, it's rare to kick in at childhood, but I will share another set of videos with you of childhood schizophrenia, which is again, um, surreal almost. And, and you really are going to feel for these parents who have to work with their children and their childhood schizophrenia. But typically, uh, schizophrenia emerges in late adolescence. That's the late teenage years. And as a person matures into adulthood. Okay. Um, there is a bit of a gender difference. It's slightly more common in males than females. It says the, the male onset is earlier. Okay, so it kicks in a little bit sooner in life in males and, and the symptoms, as we talked about before, can be more severe. Okay, who's at most risk? Statistics have shown, research has shown that uh, children who did not get breastfed, uh, underweight young men seem to be correlated to schizophrenia although there's a lot of other factors so please don't just you know look at look at yourselves and go well I wasn't breastfed and I'm underweight that doesn't mean you're a good candidate for this um, but there does seem to be some positive correlation to these okay and then finally uh, know that there's a difference 
in some schizophrenia and what's called chronic schizophrenia. Chronic schizophrenia is schizophrenia that is slow developing, okay? Like many chronic illnesses, they are, they are slow, they are lifelong, okay? The episodes of a chronic schizophrenic can last longer, and recovery from schizophrenia, chronic schizophrenia, is doubtful. Although treatment can work, but it doesn't cure it. Acute schizophrenia is schizophrenia that, that develops more rapidly, okay? Usually, this type of schizophrenia kicks in after some traumatic event, um, and the good news here with acute schizophrenia is that recovery is more likely, okay? All right, this is what I was talking about um, earlier, okay? This is another example. I'll share some, some examples of uh, adult schizophrenics in a minute, uh, but this is an example of childhood schizophrenia. Again, very rare. Uh, the learning channel, and oh, I don't know if I remember what the other uh, ABC News there it says right there. As a matter of fact, um, did some stories on the Schofields. Okay, and the two children you see in this picture uh, are Janie, okay, the girl, and Bodie, the boy. Uh, initially, the video was all about Janie Schofield and her um, her dealings with childhood schizophrenia okay and that's that's one video I'll show you and what she would do one of the things she would she would do is she would get voices in her head that would tell her to do bad things to her brother Bodhi okay which was very very difficult not just on Bodhi but on, on the parents it's led to um, not an actual marriage separation but literally a separation of the family where two of them live in one apartment and the other two live in a different apartment just for the safety of their children uh, there's a follow-up story to to them that I can also share from the learning channel where uh, Bodhi, all right, as he grew, uh, started to show signs of autism. He was diagnosed, is diagnosed autistic, but also is showing signs of paranoid schizophrenia. Okay, so again, um, we'll get into the causes of schizophrenia here in, in just a little bit, but you, you've got to wonder, does family factors, okay, genetics play a role in the development of, of schizophrenia, childhood schizophrenia being in this one here okay so that's the Schofields. please take a look at these videos if you can I, I do recommend them now moving to adult schizophrenic disorders this is why the the title of the slides are plural is because there isn't just schizophrenia there's so many different types okay you've got what's called disorganized schizophrenics and uh, the characteristics are right there for you disorganized schizophrenics act very childlike so childlike that they might even wet their pants have accidents in their pants and have what are called very flat or inappropriate emotions. Okay, flat meaning almost emotionless style emotions, if, if that makes sense. Okay, that's a disorganized schizophrenic. This one here fascinates me. I'll share a video of a, it's a pretty old video, but it's a video supposedly of a catatonic schizophrenic. A catatonic schizophrenic is someone who's almost robot-like. This in fact, when you listen to this guy, he almost does sound like the robots that we make these days. He could he could be a robot. It's that believable. Um, a catatonic stays very, very still. Very little movements. Okay, what you'll see in this video is just his eyes move. All right, very few other movements than that. Creepy, um, sinister style schizophrenia. Okay, some catatonics can even imitate or shadow the person that they're looking at, or the person they're talking to. So again, pretty fascinating style of, of schizophrenia known as catatonia or catatonic schizophrenia. Then there's this one. Chances are if you've seen uh, movies where people see things or hear things, um, you're, you're talking about a paranoid schizophrenic. Okay, These are ones that I think we hear about in the news a lot, of, of very bizarre and, and often very violent crimes. Okay. Sorry to get graphic on you here, but you know you, you hear of these horrible things that say a parent might do to their children, or, you know, where a mother drowns her kids in a tub, or uh, a father drives his his family his van full of his family off a cliff. Yes, these things do happen. Why would someone be be driven to do something like that? Sorry for the that pun there, if you will, but um, could be a voice in their head telling them to, to do something like that. All right, and that's a paranoid schizophrenic, okay? Uh, again, Russell Crowe in A Beautiful Mind, okay, plays the character um, John Nash, 
I highly recommend that one if you guys want to see a, a good profile of a paranoid schizophrenic. Then a couple more. There's residual schizophrenia. Okay, residual schizophrenics can have positive and negative symptoms like we talked about before. Remember, that's the presence of inappropriate behaviors, positive, or the absence of appropriate behaviors. In it. But then after those symptoms go away, because remember, they could be episodes, there's extreme social withdrawal, okay, uh, an extreme isolation of the self for a long period of time. And then finally, you can call it the worst one, all right, that is an undifferentiated schizophrenia where a person possesses the characteristics of several of these types that you see here, all right? There's the five, uh, you can even say six schizophrenic disorders if you count childhood schizophrenia. The causes, all right, we've got uh, nature nurture. I think a lot of a lot of the research leans, leans towards nature uh, or biology. One in 10 chances if a sibling or a parent has the disorder. So there does seem to be a genetic factor. Uh, studies of the brains of schizophrenics show an excessive level of dopamine. Remember, dopamine has a lot of roles in the in the brain, but it could perhaps overexcite many of the areas, perhaps the auditory cortex or the visual cortex. Uh, last couple things you see here is maybe an excessive level of dopamine, but then smaller or shrunken regions of other parts of the brain. Okay, uh, this page number is for my AP guys. Okay, whether you're AP or not, pretty interesting connection here is that mothers who come down with the flu while pregnant have shown an increased risk in birthing babies who later become schizophrenic. So there is a, uh, a possible connection, still biologically. We call it somewhat social too. Um, drug use has been linked to schizophrenia. If you guys have ever seen the movie, movie Requiem for a Dream, I caution you, it is a it is a graphic film. Okay, so if you're watching this with mom or dad, be warned. It, it's it is quite graphic, but it does profile some heavy amphetamine use and how uh, abuse of amphetamines can lead to a syndrome known as amphetamine psychosis, which can create uh, possibly acute, okay, even permanent paranoid schizophrenia. So drug use actually causing or creating a, a type of schizophrenia. Requiem for a Dream shows it there. Um, family and social factors can play a role. As you see here, it only aids in the development in those with gemet a genetic history of schizophrenia. Uh, there are medications, okay? And medications do calm the symptoms, but there's this really interesting one, which some of you might have seen, like in horror movies, as a matter of fact, known as electroconvulsive therapy okay this is a pretty invasive form of therapy that induces a seizure it's almost like trying to hit the reset button in the brain and this was an early form of treatment as a way to calm the schizophrenics brains down i will share this video again it's it looks like it's taken twice you know right out of a twilight zone movie or something like that but uh, that will be a Quite a, quite a way to end this this lesson here is, is looking at one of those more old school style treatments. But I say old school, there are new versions of, of ECT that, that are less invasive, still induce a seizure um, for people with depression as a matter of fact. So even though this is an old video of a, of a treatment, ver versions or variations of it are still being used today. Okay, there's schizophrenia and the schizophrenic disorders or subtypes. Thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, good luck with the questions.